Spygate is the term that is used to describe the fact that members of the Obama administration spied on a rival political presidential campaign, even though Trump never did anything wrong. The hard truth that the spying occurred is not up for debate. The only questions left are, was it justified? Was it legal? And how far up the chain did it go? But there are so many names and so much stuff going on that it gets really confusing really fast. Today, I'm gonna break this story down. <laughs> There were three plans that were deployed against the Trump team, and this video will be broken down into those plans. During Plan A, there was unofficial foreign intelligence gathering, unmasking, and FISA 702 query abuse occurring. They got caught during Plan A and moved on to Plan B, which involved getting a FISA warrant with no valid evidence of wrongdoing and launching the FBI counterintelligence investigation that was called Crossfire Hurricane. Plan C came after the election, and that involved getting President Trump out of office by any means necessary. It's October 9th in 2016, during the second presidential debate. It's just awfully good that someone with the temperament of Donald Trump is not in charge of the law in our country. Because you'd be in jail. Secretary Clinton. Clinton should have been concerned that she was going to lose the election, but she wasn't. You see, there was a whole team of people working behind the scenes to make sure that Donald Trump never became president. Donald Trump announced that he was running for president on June 16th in 2015. A lot of people didn't take him seriously. They thought it was part of a publicity stunt in order to increase ratings on his other shows. But by November in 2015, it was established that he was a serious contender. And that is when the spying began. The first step of the spying process began on July 20th, in 2015. Deputy Attorney General Sally Yates put out a 58-page memo telling the Inspector General to go kick rocks. The FBI and the Department of Justice, particularly the National Security Division, didn't have to turn over all records like everyone else, particularly those involving Title III, which is wiretapping. Because who wants oversight when you're about to break the law? And besides, there was no inspector general at state when Hillary Clinton was secretary of state. So uh, why start now? The first step happened so early into the presidential race that it makes me think that Team Hillary planned on spying on whoever the Republican nominee was and Trump just so happened to be the guy that won. Now, with what they thought was the successful minimization of oversight in place, Team Hillary launched Plan A in November of 2015. They figured out that they could get all the opposition research they wanted by using a combination of using unofficial Five Eyes information, unmasking, and more likely than not, abusing the FISA 702 query process. Five Eyes is an intelligence alliance made up of Australia, New Zealand, Canada, the UK, and the US. In late 2015, CIA Director John Brennan began receiving unofficial Five Eyes information about a possible Trump-Russia connection. We know that the intelligence was unofficial because Congressman Devin Nunes stated in April of 2018 there was never any official intelligence used to open the FBI counterintelligence investigation into the Trump campaign. Robert Hannigan, the director of the UK's GCHQ, which is responsible for signals intelligence, even traveled to America to meet with Brennan in the summer of 2016 to pass him information. This was odd because the GCHQ is the UK's equivalent of the NSA. Brennan's counterpart would have been the head of MI6. Hannigan's counterpart would have been NSA Director Admiral Mike Rogers, not CIA Director Brennan. So British officials that were supposed to be our allies were helping the Obama administration spy on Trump who never colluded with Russia. Could it have been related to Trump's pro-Brexit stance and him being tough on the EU? I don't know, only time will tell. Brennan was also taking part in unmasking members of the Trump campaign 
which can occur with incidental collection. Incidental collection happens when a person is in contact with a surveillance target. So if I email Bob and Bob is under surveillance, even if I just say, hey, nice mustache, my email gets collected. Incidental collection can happen under Title III of the Omnibus Crime Control and Safe Streets Act of 1968, which means going to court and getting a warrant because a U.S. citizen is being targeted. Incidental collection can also occur under FISA Titles I and III, which is called traditional FISA. Once again, a warrant is needed for this process because it applies to people, property, or facilities inside of the United States and when the proposed target is believed to be a foreign power or an agent of a foreign power. Additionally, incidental collection also happens when you are dealing with surveillance pursuant to Section 702 of the FISA Amendments Act. Surveillance under 702 does not require a warrant because it's supposed to target foreign terrorists on foreign soil. The Attorney General and the Director of National Intelligence have complete discretion over who the targets for surveillance are and the standard for surveillance is much lower. It's simply for foreign intelligence information. Reverse targeting, which is the targeting of a foreigner with the intent of getting information on an American citizen is strictly prohibited. If a surveillance target is communicating with an American citizen, minimization procedures are supposed to take effect. Part of those procedures include changing the citizen's name to U.S. Person 1 in order to protect the privacy of that citizen when a classified intelligence report is made. Unmasking is the term used when the American citizen's name is revealed. It can only be done for national security purposes and when the name of the citizen will help give context to the information. Leaking unmasked names is a criminal offense and unmasking Americans for reasons other than national security is called espionage. And under federal law, espionage is a felony that can carry the death penalty. So first, I recently confirmed that on numerous occasions, the intelligence community incidentally collected information about U.S. citizens involved in the Trump transition. Details about U.S. persons associated with the incoming administration, details with little or no apparent foreign intelligence value, were widely disseminated in intelligence community reporting. Third, I have confirmed that additional names of Trump transition team members were unmasked. And fourth and finally, I want to be clear, none of this surveillance was related to Russia, or the investigation of Russian activities or of the Trump team. CIA Director John Brennan, UN Ambassador Samantha Power, National Security Advisor Susan Rice, and Director of National Intelligence James Clapper are just some of the Obama administration officials that are guilty of unmasking members of the Trump team. Mr. Clapper and Ms. Yates, uh, did either of you ever request the unmasking of Mr. Trump, his associates, or any member of Congress? Um, yes. The unmasking of the Trump team associates would continue even after the election. Finally, in November of 2015, around the same time John Brennan was receiving unofficial Five Eyes intelligence information, the FBI was abusing the FISA 702 query process. There are two ways that the NSA gathers information under FISA Section 702. Downstream collection, which was previously known as PRISM, and upstream collection. For downstream collection, the NSA gets user information directly from U.S. companies like Facebook, Google, Skype, and YouTube. With upstream collection, the NSA essentially wiretaps the underwater fiber optic cables that the vast majority of global internet traffic flows through. Intelligence analysts can then run different kinds of searches or queries on the data the NSA collected by entering selectors into the system. Selectors are things like names, email addresses, phone numbers, IP addresses, and keywords. 702.16s are to and from queries. That means you can search the upstream and downstream data and retrieve any information 
that is sent to or is sent from a foreign target of surveillance that is on foreign soil. There are also 702-17s, which are about queries. These are only available from searching the upstream data. These messages simply mention or are about a foreign surveillance target that is on foreign soil. So if I sent an email that said, I hate terrorist Joe to a friend of mine in the US, my totally domestic email could be captured without a warrant. Fortunately, about queries ended under the Trump administration. Querying the NSA database will give you all kinds of information, like emails, social media account data, voice and video chats, and photographs. As you can see, having access to raw FISA 702 data could be a powerful weapon if it fell into the wrong hands. And that's exactly what the FBI did deliberately and illegally. The FBI gave private contractors people with no legal authority whatsoever access to raw FISA data. I know it sounds unbelievable, but it's all detailed in a 99-page unsealed Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court report dated April 26th of 2017. The contractor's access was not limited to the raw information for which the FBI had sought assistance, and the private contractor's access continued even after their work for the FBI had been completed. The names of the private contractors that the FBI broke the law to give access to have been redacted. But according to former U.S. Attorney for Washington, D.C., Joe DeGeneva, He's seen reports stating that those contractors included Fusion GPS and CrowdStrike. I'll be explaining who those contractors are during Plan B. It is believed that among those contractors were Fusion GPS and CrowdStrike. And I've seen two reports about CrowdStrike being among the private contractors that were given access to raw 702 incidental collection of American citizens under FISA warrants. If that is true, they have committed crimes. The bureau who gave them information committed crimes. The FBI may have gotten away with their criminal activity if it wasn't for the heroic efforts of one man. And that man was NSA Director Admiral Mike Rogers. It's worth noting that most of the people that worked for the government agencies that were involved with the spying were good people. There were just a few bad hombres at the top that conducted themselves in a possibly treasonous fashion. So between late 2015 and early 2016, Admiral Rogers noticed something strange was going on with the 702 queries. On January 7th of 2016, NSA Inspector General George Ellard wrote a report noting that there were 702 violations occurring, including using American citizens' information to query the upstream data, which really isn't supposed to happen because 702 upstream queries are supposed to target foreign terrorists on foreign soil. Admiral Rogers turned around and ordered a fundamental baseline review of compliance associated with 702. But the review wouldn't be completed until October 20th of 2016. On March 9th in 2016, Department of Justice oversight personnel reported the FBI had been giving private contractors access to raw FISA data. On April 18th of 2016, Admiral Rogers shut down the FBI's private contractor access to raw FISA data while his investigation continued. Also on March 9th of 2016, the same day the DOJ reported about the FBI's FISA abuse, Lisa Page sent a text to Peter Strzok saying that the FBI had messed up in a major way. Meet Peter Strzok and Lisa Page. They're both married just not to each other. He's a high-level FBI agent, and she is a top FBI lawyer. You would think that holding those kinds of positions would mean that you were smart, but you'd be wrong. These two lovebirds are going to text each other all kinds of fun stuff, like how much they love Hillary, and how much they hate Trump, and 
evidence that can be used against them in a court of law. He would think that you'd at least use a burner phone if you were about to follow the yellow brick road down to Treason Town. That's right, they got caught up in a hurricane. A crossfire hurricane. If you like this video, subscribe, give it a thumbs up, and please share it. I'm right from right, left of center, and if you're watching, you're probably right too.